Can you discuss uh, NU5G in meat? Is it dangerous? No. Simple as that, it's no. <laughs> there are multiple generations of humans. It's an association. All this is associational. It's like, for instance, um, a TMAO. It's associational as well. Actually, there is some mechanistic studies that show that TMAO may be beneficial, not not, um, not bad, but good. So, you know, but uh, still we haven't teased out the mechanism exactly. So that's the whole thing. And this, again, may be good as well, but we haven't teased out the mechanism. See, it's like LP little a. LP little a isn't bad. When you actually have inflammation, it goes up. But is it bad? No. It actually is a, a reparative system. So what are you putting? If you're putting seed oils and other toxins down your throat and you're basically doing increasing the inflammation, but if you take a look where, when you eat meat, your C-reactive protein or your inflammatory markers go down. So how can this be dangerous? Just because this goes up. You know, um, if you eat certain foods, certain things go up. But it doesn't mean it's dangerous. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's part of that food. It's just not, it's associational. Um, uh, so ignore it completely. It's based on associational data. 95% of all studies out there are junk. They're associational. They're based on food frequency questionnaires. So we ask people to fill out questionnaires. What did you eat, young little man or young little lady or old lady or old man? What did you eat in the last year or so? Can you please tell us what? And you fill out a whole lot of questionnaires, which are not even complete questionnaires. They don't cover everything. You know, so I'll give you an example in the blue zones, like in the um in Greece and Ikaria, where people consume a lot of animal foods, they, in the questionnaire, only had one entry for meat, and that was for meat. And when it translates into Greek, kareas, which means meat, actually um, means only beef in Greek. Well, there's no, on islands, there's no cattle. There's only goats and sheep and stuff like that. Greeks call kareas um, meat. So we, are, so we, are, when somebody says, um, have you eaten meat? What they mean is, have you eaten beef? When we, you know, um, otherwise we identify the other meats as in their own names. So it's a cultural thing. But that's how culturally insensitive these food questionnaires are, that they miss these things. They didn't even have dairy, an entry for dairy. So, and they, these are pastoralists, people that actually have, you know, feta cheese and all sorts of things. And they didn't even have an entry for that. Here they were asking them, what do you eat? And they didn't even have a, in their questionnaire an entry for, for dairy. How crazy is that? But that's the problem with these food frequency questionnaires. And that's what they base. And then they do what is called um, adjustments to the data. Because they're adjusting for age and they're adjusting for all these other factors. So what they're doing is they're fabricating. They're altering the actual evidence that they it's like a physicist measures a pulsar and says, I'm gonna adjust the information that I got from that pulsar. And then another physicist says, I'm gonna adjust also that information that I got from another from, from the same pulsar. When you compare the two, they don't match. That is why more than 95% of all research cannot be replicated. And even the previous head of the New England Journal of Medicine, she resigned in disgust for that exact reason that most of the science that is published in her magazine, well, she doesn't work for the magazine anymore, but at the time, that it was just junk science. 95% can't even be replicated. If you can't replicate something, it means it's not true. It's bullshit. And... These are not even experiments. These are basically just observations, um, poorly conducted observations. Like at least a physicist uses very precise instruments to accurately measure the pulsar. These people are just asking ignorant everyday people that have got no idea about nutrition or anything just to fill out a questionnaire as best as they can work it out. That's why one day eggs are good, the next day they're bad. Apples are good or bad, depending on who fills out the questionnaires. So these questionnaires are just bogus. And because everybody consumes a bit of meat, even the, the kibble eaters, because even the McDonald's type people that go and eat, um, you know, fries in seed oils and, and all those soft drinks and other crap like that, 
when you can, you know, these people will basically say, yeah, I eat meat as well. So obviously everybody's going to have this higher level. Um, they're going to have a, a certain proportion of that. Well, they haven't looked at carnivals or low-carb people. They've just looked at general people because where these questionnaires are handed out are in hospitals among sick, sick people that are eating the standard diet. These are the people that they're actually basing their evidence on. It's not even evidence. It's just basically feed f- food, food frequency questionnaires, which are poorly collected the data and then fabricated through adjustments, which are basically biased adjustments based on their own particular belief systems. And they don't, they're not even significant. The level isn't even over an odds ratio of two. They call it a risk ratio. It's not. It's a relativistic um, ratio of association, and it's called an odds ratio in statistics. And you need an odds ratio just for a hypothesis of two or three, let alone most epidemiologists in the business agree that in order to infer anything, that means you can only through experimentation prove cause and effect. Through a strong association, we can only infer that the probability that it's this than that, so there's no cause and effect here, just an inference. All this data is associational with poor, not even an inference. It's not even, it's below two. Even even processed meat is, some of the highest that I've actually seen is about 20 something percent, which is 1.2 something, which is irrelevant, you know, in that regard. It's fairly, fairly irrelevant. So it, even for a hypothesis, uh, it's too low, all the studies and all that. And that's why when we look at the um, NEU5GC or the TMAO stuff, it's all very low, these odds ratios. So it's basically statistically noise. It's irrelevant. Where tobacco is in in the thousands of percents, like from ten, an odds ratio of ten to thirty, and even tobacco, you know, I can show populations that have consumed tobacco live into old age. Even the the woman that lived the oldest age to one hundred and twenty two, she stopped smoking at one hundred and fifteen because her hands shook. This French woman said, her, "My hands shook, and it just was unsightly, so I had to stop it." <laughs> and there there's an odds ratio of ten to 30 and these are one point something irrelevant it's bullshit it's what danger it's not even it's not even a credible association even shark attacks and ice cream sales are more correlated and have a stronger statistical inference you know it's nonsense absolutely nonsense okay absolutely crap um nothing experimental when we do actually experiments um, even um, we sh- we see the complete opposite. So, and these are animal experiments because we can't lock people up for years and years and years in labs, and we do them on animals. You know, I've, and I've done some some of the stuff. Where I showed the cancer one. I showed you know high amounts of bacon being cancer protective. Um, then I've done another one, and these are in rat studies. And there's another one basically of uh, if you do, you know, will protein damage your kidneys? Harry Sopanos, you Google that, you'll find the video. And it's a, a video basically where I show up to 70% the rat was given. And the rat is, a, even, is, a, is an animal which is an omnivore. It's not even adapted to a large, a large amount of animal foods. And here they were giving it massive amounts of casein, and the animal was fine. It was actually big muscular growth. It was much bigger and stronger than the other rats with bigger kidneys. It was just an uber rat rather than, a, uh, you know, an unhealthy rat. It was really healthy. Again, destroying that whole narrative. And even um, one of, even out of Stanford University, a guy called Christopher Gartner did the A to Z study. This was back in 2005. And Christopher basically is a vagoon, and he actually had to admit in the if you go to the Stanford University site and do the Battle of the Diets, um, uh, you know, and it'll actually have Christopher explaining why his results of his randomized control study. This is where they actually told people they randomized them and said you're going to do this study, this diet, that study, diet, and all that Ornish, the Zone diet, 
Um, the Learn diet, which is the nutritional diet, um, which is another low um, low fat type diet, and basically the Atkins diet. And we're talking about the traditional Atkins diet, not the new Atkins diet that um, that was actually developed at Duke University, which is more plant based. We're talking about the original Atkins diet, which was bacon and eggs and all that. And these people were basically healthier, lower inflammation, had lost more weight. But beyond that, when they actually drilled into the data, they actually saw that all their lipid profile, everything was much better. Their inflammation was much better. Everything was much better. And he had to admit it, that Atkins won on all these accounts. And here's people doing a one year. So for one year, we can actually say, compared to all the other diets, it's superior, where all the other diets had elevated something or weren't you know, as good. And here was a diet that was much more, more meat heavy compared to the other three diets, you know, where the zone diet was sort of a middle of the road, sort of a sort of paleo-esque, as a, sort of a paleo type um, style. The And the other ones were low fat ones. And they were both, you know, Ornish, you know, the vagoons out there always arguing about how Ornish, the Ornish diet and the Esselstein diet reversed cardiovascular disease. Bullshit. He is a vagoon himself. He actually took a lot of flack, Christopher, and now he's gone back to doing some of his ridiculous studies that he that he used to do in the past because he won't do these big randomised control studies because he doesn't like them because he gets a lot of flack from the vagoon um, society out there whenever he does something like this. That was actually the only time he actually did some decent, um, you know, research and uh, independent research, which wasn't, uh, you know, where he put his ideology aside, where before he was doing a whole lot of ideological stuff, he was doing garlic studies and all these other things to try and promote that these these um, plant foods are much better for you. He was doing all those sort of um, studies. So just bullshit, a different day. And, you know, sick people in the hospital with all sorts of diseases being given questionnaires to fill out, mate, and just because they've been eating McDonald's and all that sort of shit, for the, from there to extrapolate about healthy eating, it's a joke. It's a joke on us, on all of us. That's what it is. So completely ignore it, Kay.